Let me flip over to Pro Tools again, and we'll talk about a little post-production. This film, like I said, uh, Kick-Ass, came out last year. Um, it was done all Avid Workflow, Media Composer. It was all Pro Tools, whether it was sound design, Foley, pre-made, pre-dub, and Final Mix. It was edited by Eddie Hamilton, who did uh, X-Men First Class, Resident Evil, Long Way Around, so respected editor. Avid Unity Shared Storage is where all the media came from. Uh, D-Command was used along with Pro Tools for Foley mixing. They used four Pro Tools HD Excel systems to do the mix, and they mixed it actually on a System 5 console. The mix configuration that they used was a four Pro Tools rig. One, one is the final dubber, they're all HD3 systems, but the three playback systems, one was for dialogue, one was for music, one was for sound effects. All HD3 rigs ready to go mixing back to a fourth machine. Well, tonight, I've got system configuration B, which is one Mac Pro with two HDX cards, and my uh, HD Omni. Let's take a look at this session. It's basically all three of those machines plus the recorder in one session. There's all the music tracks and down here are all the stems. Let's take a look at our system usage window. Okay, here's the good stuff. Voices allocated, 318. Uh, 256 physical tracks but using 318 voices out of the possible 512. As far as DSP usage, we've got both cards here represented. We're using maybe a card and a half if you sort of add all that stuff up together. Most of the first one is all the mixer, and the second card's doing all the DSP stuff. If you look at the mixer page, it's pretty crazy. 256 tracks, it's a lot to deal with. I think there's 150 EQs, about 45 compressors, and there's eight reverbs. A lot of them are channel strip, as you can see up here. Of course, everything is mixed down to 5.1. My music stems, my dialogue stems, Foley stems, effect stems, background stems, and then my program master. How many drives, somebody take a crack at it, how many drives do you think this is going to take to play? Yeah, one. Right. In fact, it's the same drive I'm running the OS off of, which really you're not supposed to do, but I'm doing it anyway. Yeah. If you look in the window over here, you'll see two little gas gauges that, that are new, and you'll see disk cache and timeline cached. I'm using the HDX, I'm running at 128 samples, right? So pretty low. I'm using seven out of my eight processors, that's normal, I'll use one less. 512 voices, because I got two cards. I'm using 16 gigs of RAM for my cache. I've got 24 in the machine. Pro Tools, when you boot it, it says, I'm gonna take these three gigs of RAM no matter what you say. And I like to be nice to the OS and let the OS have a gig of RAM to run my display, check my email, blah, 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 while I'm working. Outside of the three gigs that Pro Tools demands, I can allocate as much extra RAM. So I'm going to give this 16 gigs because that's plenty. What it's doing now is it's taking my whole session, it's cached my whole timeline, and since I'm using 16 gigs of RAM, 26%, let's call it 25%, so a quarter of my 16 gigs is green, so it's filled up, it's cached the whole session. So my whole session's what, four gigs? A little more than four gigs, right? That being said, let me really be a jerk to Pro Tools, and I'm gonna do something really not nice. Everybody see that? Everybody see that? There's a hundred more tracks. My voice count has gone up to 418. I'm gonna play. Welcome back, breaking news. And of course, Worldwide web we're playing HD video at the same time, right? Who calls himself kick -ass. It's about to be shown live. It's pretty tough to show it on the same screen, but here's what I'm going to do. Let me give it a little headache. Automation to identity. Okay, too much automation. We go now. I'm basically clicking and pushing play. What I want you to do, look at this disc. See the disc use? That's basically how hard the disc is working. See if you can follow that disc, that middle gas gauge there while I click around in this thing. Predicting that it could be one of the most wide ID. Yeah. I'm pushing 318 voices and the disc going up to what, one or two percent? That's because it's trying to play video. And if you're, you're sharing yourself, then I'm going to make it through this. What this allows you to do is, whether you've got a four gig session or a 15 gig session, you can load it into RAM and have instant play. And if anybody here running Pro Tools, and I'm sure there's two or three of you running Pro Tools here, if you've ever gotten the error that says, oh, can't get the disc audio from the disc fast enough, please wait, you'll never see that again because your whole session lives in RAM. The unspoken bonus of this is that with the new extended disc cache and the disc handlers that are written into Pro Tools 10, both HD and non-HD, it allows you to use network attached storage, USB 2, Firewire. If you can access that drive from your Mac, you can play a session from it. It's about as fast as it's going to get. 
that in itself is pretty impressive because now if you have a multi-room facility, you can put all your Pro Tools sessions on one server and everybody can work off the same server. So if you work from room to room to room, you don't have to move disks. You don't have to drag and drop things across the network. It all just comes across when you open up Pro Tools sessions. Also in Pro Tools is a new mixer, which comes with Pro Tools HD. It's not an add-on, it's not a buy, it's not third party. It's a down mixer plugin, 5.1 channel plugin right here. It's about to be shown live. That level change, level gain, level control. I can mute. There I'm muting the center channel, which is all 90% of vocals in a 5.1 mix. It could be one of the most widely viewed I can mute the stereo, I can mute everything. I've got control over everything, whether it's from a control surface or not. The beauty of this is, I can be monitoring through a down mixer and printing through it. So if I'm mixing in 5.1, I can do all my 5.1 stems, my 5.1 print master, but I can, I can also print a stereo mix that's following all the pan laws. See how my levels are set in here, following the level sets for fold down. I can export a stereo mix, marry it to a QuickTime, export it to Media Composer, and they can post an approval copy in minutes. I don't have to go back and do another 10 minute or 30 minute down mix through a, a different program. So another time saver. And like I said, this comes with Pro Tools. And one of the last things I want to show you in this session is some export functions. I've got all my 5-1 stems all the way down to my print master. So that's 36 tracks worth of stuff. And if I want to send this back to my media composer and say, oh look, he's got finished picture, I'm working to a temp. Let me send him my 5-1 mix as a double AF and he can import it into his session and play back. Because the beauty of Media Composer 6 now is it can play multi-channel files. If I export as a double AF, I can actually tick this box, export stereo 5171 tracks as multi-channel tracks. So basically my video editor can pull in a 5.1 or 7.1 mix, marry it to picture, post it, be done. Or send it to online and the mix is done. He's got a 5.1 track he can play back and it's done. Power, we're talking about horsepower of this session. I was playing 418 voices, clicking around like it was a 10 track session. Here's sort of a layout. This is a 48K session. So with a 48K session with one HDX card, I can have 200 tracks, each with the new channel strip on it, each with heat instantiated on it, with basically two aux ends per channel, so 400 aux ends. In addition, I can have eight reverb one effects returns, eight mod delay three returns, and 16 subgroups or sub buses for my music or my surround mix or however you want it, each with impact plugins on it, and then a Maxim stereo mix compressor on the mix bus, all on one HDX card. Quite a bit of DSP horsepower, 200 tracks, 400 auxes, everybody's got heat going, eight reverbs, eight delays, 16 stereo sub buses with impact compressors on them, and then an overall stereo bus compression. Power of HDX, giant sessions on less cards. We just played 418 voices on two cards on one Mac off one drive. 256 voices per card. The new disc scheduler, Pro Tools 10. Actually, non-HD Pro Tools even has the new disc scheduler. So between the combination of the new disc scheduler and no more fade files, even non-HD Pro Tools is going to work amazingly faster and better. Uh, the extended disk cache for both HD and if you have Pro Tools 10 with Complete Production Toolkit, you actually get the extended disk cache. These are the main bullets we wanted to cover tonight. Clip-based gain, real-time fades, audio suites with handles, you can have multiple plugins open, the new AAX 64-bit ready format, the new disk schedule extended disk cache, and the Yukon stuff. Again, Pro Tools HDX, five times the power of HDXL. Now, if you have three HDX cards, you can play back up to 768 voices. With three cards, you can do up to 12 interfaces, in other words, 192 inputs. The mixer and all the audio processing within Pro Tools 10 is now 32-bit floating point processing. So very, very powerful. I'm gonna open a little session. That 32 gig backup drive that I'm highlighted on right there, that's a USB drive sitting in the front of the CPU. That's not a system drive, it's a thumb drive. And I want you to watch the timeline cache and the disk cache. It's going to go slow because it's USB 2. I can immediately push play. Let me flip over to Pro Tools again. And we'll talk about a little post-production. It's about 80 tracks, 95 voices. You know, it's not a very big session. Watch the timeline cache. It's going to move. 50, 55, 57%. As soon as I hit play, it stops. I never knew. What? The whole session is cached. 
and it's at three percent. So now Okay, remember that's 75 tracks and 95 voices. That's playing off a thumb drive. So there you go. A little stunt I like to pull just because it works. The new family, same interfaces, same new HDIOs, Omni, MADI interface, but now it's either HD native or HDX. Either way, you can't lose. The power of HDX is insane. So we've got Pro Tools 10, the new inbox interfaces. Complete Production Toolkit actually gives Pro Tools 10 all the features of HD minus having the hardware, whether it's HD native or HDX. And then you pick your flavor. Do you want to go native or do you want to go HDX and, and have massive DSP and massive track counts? Pick your poison, they're both great. Software upgrades, HD 9 to HD 10 when we announced it, a lot of people were shocked. It's $9.95 to upgrade from HD 9 to HD 10. It's a lot of money, yes, it is. But look at the features that you're getting. Look how much faster you're gonna work. Look how much better you're gonna work. To sweeten the pie, we've added a little perk. If you're on Pro Tools HD 9, you can buy the assurance package, which includes a year of free phone support, and a year of free upgrades, if you buy it tomorrow and there's a paid upgrade of Pro Tools 10 or 11 or 12 or whatever it's gonna be, you get it for free for 12 months. It's kind of a no brainer. Hardware upgrades, if you're on an HD3 Excel system, if you wanna to go to Pro Tools HDX with Pro Tools 10, it comes bundled, $59.95. Your HD3 Excel system probably costs 13 grand, so that's really a pretty decent upgrade. Now, if you have a 192 or a 96, one of any of the blue HD interfaces, if you trade it in at the same time, you'll get an Omni for free. Or for an extra thousand bucks, you get an 8x8x8 HDIO, which is the two rack space. Looks like the 192s, but it's 100% different on the inside. The 8x8x8 is eight channels of analog in and out, eight channels of digital in and out. And you, for an extra grand of seven Omnis, you can do, go that route. So that's pretty much all I can fill your brains with up for now. Okay, we're done. Perfect. Cool. Sweet.